Doherty's own Russ Myers was one of the best rhythm bones players in the world. Rhythm bones have been played since prehistoric times and are amongst the oldest musical instruments known to man. Yet, in the hands of a master like Russ Myers, the bones can effectively articulate the rhythms of 20th century American popular music. Russ was born on March 27, 1934, in Baltimore, Maryland, to David Russell and Helen Bordley Myers. Russ was in the third grade when he discovered that his father had played the rhythm bones himself in minstrel shows when he was a young man. Russ attended Washington and Lee College and joined the Army Oral TC, becoming the first, and probably the only, marching rhythm bones player. Russ married Wilma on October 24, 1959. They have two children, Jennifer Bordley Walters and David Russell Myers. Russ was a walking encyclopedia of rhythm bones history. Russ was a founding member of the Rhythm Bones Society, and he and his wife Wilma hosted Bones Fest 3. It was here the society was formed, with 34 members. Russ was elected the first assistant director of the Rhythm Bones Society, and he played a central role in the development of this new organisation. In 2001, Russ competed in and won the World Bones and Spoons Contest, held annually in Iowa and presented by the National Traditional Country Music Association. In 2002, in recognition of his exceptional musicianship and his contribution to bones playing, Russ was elected as a Fellow of the Rhythm Bones Society, the only such recognition of a bones player given to date. Like many Rhythm Bones players, Russ loved to share his knowledge and skills with younger people. Here he is, teaching in a classroom. The American Folklife Centre at the Library of Congress has a project to preserve folk music for future generations. Russ was chosen by the Folklife Centre to record a segment on the Rhythm Bones. This is a letter of thanks from the Library of Congress. If you go there, you can listen to this recording. There was a bone player in Madison County named Frank Barnett, and the Barnetts owned the Barnett Greenhouse. He played the bone since the 1920s. He's made himself with his own set out of standing rib roast. He came up one day and he said, can I play with you, Russ? So we played around, and he said, you know, my kids don't know anything about this. When I die, I want you to have this bone. Would that be all right? I said, that'd be fine. Appreciate it, Frank, very much. Well, strange enough, shortly thereafter, the poor guy did die. And they held it in Clore Funeral Home, and there were lines of people going up to the coffin, and Mary Barnett was standing there. And in the first row, there were four elderly ladies sitting there. And uh, as I came forward, she says, oh, Russ, Frank wanted you to have his bones. Well, the four ladies almost had a reflection there, and the, light, and the conversation in the place got dead. <laughs> we had an awful lot of explaining to do. <laughs> Most of us do it for our own entertainment. Is it worth it to my neighbor? Probably not. Ah, I don't know, but it's worth it to us that play it. Our only hope is to take it from a novelty to a recognized musical instrument. It was used primarily for religious ceremonies from Saudi Arabia on up. It transferred from there to Egypt, where it was a particular favorite instrument of the goddess Hathor, who was the Egyptian goddess of fertility. They played bones in order to guarantee fertility. 
Our heritage comes from Great Britain and Ireland. What we try to do is change pitch without moving the bones in your hands. So what, change pitch while you're playing. Now, to the best of my knowledge, I don't know if you can do this with wooden bones. Maybe you can. But I find that you do have to hold them with two fingers, like the Scotsman do, on the side. And then the way you change pitch is, strange enough, slide this finger up and then take it off. And slide it back and bring it down. All you're doing is changing the density of the bone. And when you change the density, you change pitch. All right. So that's all there is to it. It's just this. Move this move finger. finger. You down here for base, here for next highest pitch, and then off for the highest. That's all there is to it. Like everything else in the world, it's simple. Russ was a compelling performer. Each year at Bones Fest, the annual gathering of the Rhythm Bones Society, Russ delighted his audience with his wonderful stories and his unmatched skills as a two-handed bones player. In 2006, at Bones Fest 10 in New Bedford, Ross gave a final performance to his audience of Bones players and their families and friends. Here's Ross playing with the Possum Ridge String Band. For those in the Rhythm Bones community and the many others blessed by the gift of his laughter and his music, Russ Myers was a pure joy. His memory is cherished by many and his spirit and his music live on. Russ's wife, Wilma, has built her own memorial to Russ in the backyard of their home in Brightwood, Virginia. Music